machine, exciting machine to show you today. So, I'm going to pull it out of its case. It comes with this case, and this machine will be up for sale. I have repaired and serviced a combi. And for those of you that don't know what a combi is, it is a standard sewing machine on one side. two thread serger on the other in a single machine. So, let's get the pedal out. You get the pedal. I'm also including all of the accessories. The only thing I don't have for this machine that it's supposed to come with is the book. So you got a whole load of a pile of accessories there. There is yellowing on it. I mean, it is a fairly old machine. The case itself has got some yellowing on it. You can see in the comparison here. We'll rotate that around again. I have replaced all the bulbs in this with LED bulbs. It has been serviced, greased, and ready to sew. And when I got this machine, it was actually stuck. So, and it's taken quite a bit of effort to get it running again. So let's plug it in and see how it works. Before I plug this machine in, I want to point out this power cord actually has a fast slow setting on it. So if you plug the machine in and it seems kind of sluggish, check to make sure you don't have it on low. Um, I didn't realize this when I was first sewing with it and I thought, wow, this machine's kind of on the slow side and then realized there's a high mode that goes with it. So let's plug it in. Turn it on. And we're going to start this by threading the machine. That's how we're going to start this video. Not overly complicated, pretty simple. And I'm just going to cheese it. I've got some thread on a bobbin here, some hot green thread. And then I'll take a picture of it, but there is a hole in this one spool. And the reasoning behind that is, is you could put a cone on the back of the machine, run it up through this guide, throw through this this guide on this one and then thread the machine and run off of a cone as opposed to running off of a spool. So we're going to go like that. It goes through here. Make sure your foot is up. Goes down through the first tension. Up. Over. And in there. So we'll get you a front view as well. Like I said, it goes into this first one, goes down through there, this is your tension, up, make sure you get into this arm in there, make sure the arm's all the way up, and there, and there, just like that. Now let's put a needle in it and Got get a needle book out, and I think today we're going to go ahead and just go with, I think we'll just go with a size, size 12. And then of course, like any machine, the groove goes towards the front. And there's a hole, and you just tighten your clamp. And then of course you're in this upper guide. There's another guide right there, right before the needle. Get a pair of scissors here. I don't know about you. I couldn't stand it. I had to get up and play with sewing machines. Golly, maybe I should have went with a larger needle. There we go. Oh, dang it. There. Now we're going to put a bobbin in. 
and we're going to pull our thread up. accessories box out of my way. Open this up. And I'm going to grab my bobbin here. Find the edge of my thread. There it is. And you want the bobbin winding in this direction. And you're just going to drop it in. There's a groove right here that you pull it through. And then another groove that you lay it over and across. And then when you close your lid, there's a little bit of a spot just for to let your thread to stick through. And we'll give it a whirl and pull our thread up. Just like that. Now this uses snap-on feet. And we'll dig in our accessory box and see what we're going to use today. get with this machine is five vintage bobbins, a seam ripper, there's a guide for the uh, serger, plastic satin foot, blind stitch edge foot, or maybe it's just an edge foot, I'm not sure, the G foot, yeah, that's the blind stitch, I'm pretty sure. That's the edge stitch foot. Buttonhole foot. The zigzag foot. The rolled hem foot for the serger. Some miscellaneous needles. A zipper foot. A straight stitch foot. A couple of screwdrivers. A brush. The rolled hem plate to go with the surgery side. And foot B, which is kind of like a cording universal something foot. I don't know, I've never used this one. Right now, we're going to put on our zigzag foot, standard zigzag. And like I said, snap on adapter system. This is pretty simple. You just line your foot up right there. And there's a button in the back and it just pops right on just like that and then we're gonna pull our thread up and through now we're ready to sew something I've got my dial set for center homing straight stitching I got my length at four and of course that's the reverse now if you wanted to use the stretch stitch you would continue pulling down on the stitch selector, the length here, until you hit stretch stitch. And then of course it's got some negative and positive, you can you got some adjustment to it. And then I can roll it back and it puts it back to a standard just backwards. And then this pink area would be for your button holding. It's a real, real fine itty bitty stitch. We're gonna set it to four, bit of long stitch, and we're gonna stitch some stuff. couple of pieces of material here. I'm just going to put that right underneath the pressure foot. And I do want to point out on this machine, this pressure, this machine does not have extra lift. So what you see is what you get. I've got the machine set on slow. control of this machine. Then I'm going to back tack this. And that's what we've got. Could loosen the tension up a little bit on the top. The tension on this machine is here. So I'm going to loosen it up just a bit. I'm a little on the tight side. And I like how it has an area where you should be. 
I, I kind of like how that's marked and really I've been sewing with the machine and that's about where you should be. Machine into high and let's get let's get this rolling. Pretty quiet machine. And then let's change our stitch length. some stretch stitching. That's a forward and backwards real heavy straight stitch. Oh, I guess I was on low. Let's kick it up to high. Golly, I thought that was kind of slow. See, somebody's got to watch me. Combi, the way you do zigzagging on the combi is this is for center homing straight stitching that puts the machine to the left homing and then your zigzag area and you can feel the little pops. So we're going to start off with a wide zigzag. Let's tighten the stitch up a little bit here. Let's go a little closer, a little tighter. Change the length here. try a stretch stitch. We actually have a stretch stitch zigzag as well. Got it on SS. And then of course there's some minus in there. Positive. Neat. Let's try another one of these stitches. Okay, and, then, and then, like I said, this will adjust your zigzag with itself so how wide you want it to go then we're gonna go to a multi-point multi-point zigzag and then we'll try that feathering stitch or whatever you call that one I'm not real sure what you would call that oh I want to make that length a lot smaller there we go set it for straight for the uh, stretch stitching see what that looks like used much it wasn't even hardly dirty inside I think somebody bought it and then it sat let's go on to the next stitch let's see what else we got and this is uh, I'm pretty sure this is your blind hem or some kind of decorative stitch but anyways I noticed that there's two settings for it and you can feel two clicks in there you've got the normal one and then a smaller variant of it so you can do a little one or a big one and then of course there's a decorative straight sti uh, stretch stitch that goes with it as well. 
So let's give those a try and see what they look like. So we'll start with the non-stretch. I'm gonna bring my... Yeah, maybe it's just a decorative. That's not really a blind, is it? Let's make it smaller. There we go. Let's try our stretch. Make it big. And we'll go on to the next. We're going to go on to the next one, and I think this is like a pine needle and a blind stitch right there. And we're going to start with the blind stitch, and we'll see what that looks like. Then we'll move on over to the stretch stitch, and then this last one is a special one. So we'll save that one for last. Yeah, that must be the blind stitch. That looks awfully blindy. Then we'll roll over to the stretch stitch. Now let's move over to a button. It has its special foot, so we're going to take our zigzag off. And you can do that just by pressing the button. It's a snap-on system. I'm assuming most of you know what a snap-on system is. If not, well, they snap on and off. Now you know. We'll get our buttonhole foot up underneath there. And if you've already noticed, I pulled my thread through the buttonhole foot itself. The uh, thread goes through it. It doesn't go on top of it. And we're going to load our material. and snap it down and we'll select our buttonhole. This is a multi-step buttonhole and you see they've got it marked one, two, three, and four. So we're going to start on one and it's this pink and then we need to set our stitch length somewhere in the pink area. You may have to adjust it as you go but that's what makes it into a really really tight stitch. I'm almost out of thread so I hope we have enough here. Of course it would help if you put on the foot right. Dean. Jeez. Got it on backwards. You do have to put it on the correct way. And you'll know that really quickly because the needle will not go through it. Hey, that looks better. And then there's some red markers to kind of give you a gauge on how big your buttonhole foot's going to be. So let's just make a big one. Okay. There's the first side. So then we got to go to two. And we'll make the uh, front part of it. So we'll do that a couple of rounds, like so. Now we got to go back down. And the, uh, finish it up with the over front here and set it for three. And we'll go back down the back side of this. Okay. Now we need to finish it off. Number four. One buttonhole foot or buttonhole thingy, my bob. Isn't that handy? So kind of a pain in the butt, not terrible. And that's the basic, that's the uh, basic stitches of the machine. That's what it can stitch. That concludes my video on the sewing end of the Combi DX. I hope you enjoyed it and it was very informative. The next video I'm going to do is the serger end of it. So why don't you subscribe, like this video, and let me know if there's anything you would like to know more about this combi. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please leave them at the bottom and we'll respond. Thank you.